yours. Coming up in this episode, we have... They do have these solar-powered SOS telephones, but you'd probably be waiting for a very long time before you got rescued. Just got my camera out and focused it in the nick of time because they ran away pretty quick. You could imagine nearly all of those sailors would have been up there for that mass 500 years ago, but so few of them made it back to Spain. A lot of history up there. And it's 107 metres below sea level. And according to this, it's the lowest point in both the southern and western hemispheres. A lot of them don't have health insurance, don't pay tax, don't get all the workers' rights that you would if you worked in the city. So I'm in the town of Fitzroy in the far south of Argentina in Patagonia. I'd set up my tent in very windy conditions the night before. This is what it looked like at around 7am. The sun hadn't even come up yet. And look at the temperature. Only 5 degrees Celsius, a bit chilly. But I knew I had to hit the road early because the winds down here just get so strong later in the day. At about 9.20am, at Wacky clocked up 7,000 kilometres, so I pulled over to bury a coin, a geocache. And there's the GPS location if you want to go and dig it up. But it might be a bit hard to find. I buried it away from the roadside, near a fence. You can see at this latitude and time of year, the sun is very weak. And it's too windy for trees, only plants like this. I saw a dirt track and a sign saying there was a petrified forest 50 kilometres to the west. But that's 50 kilometres there and 50 kilometres back. That's an extra 100 kilometres and I'm starting to worry about running out of gas. But just up ahead, I found this place called La Cabana. But guess what? A bunch of barking dogs announced my arrival. I was looking forward to breakfast and a full tank, but the owner told me there was no food or fuel for sale. But he said there was gasoline and food and everything 14 kilometres down the road at Tres Cerros. So that was a relief to know that. But I was still worried I'd run out before I got there because I was fighting the wind and that dramatically increases your fuel consumption. And if you run out here in this desolate country, well, they do have these solar-powered SOS telephones. But you'd probably be waiting for a very long time before you got rescued. I was finally able to get a few shots of these guanacos. I think they're guanacos. And what magnificent animals they are. Look at this guy. Look how proud he looks. One of my best photos, I think. This one. Just got my camera out and focused it in the nick of time. Because they ran away pretty quick. And you notice here, there's a ridge behind there. You often see animals, they go around these ridges to keep out of the wind. They're not, they're not dumb, they're smart. Uh, so, you know, when the wind's this way, they'll, they'll go downwind of the ridge. And that'll protect them somewhat from that howling, horrible wind. A bit further along, I saw this flock of sheep, which Patagonia is famous for. And you can see they're also huddling right in the bottom of that ridge to protect themselves from the wind. Heading ever southwards on Ruta National 3, the road passed between these two hills, Cerro Shoal to the west and Cerro Wood to the east. And it looked interesting enough for me to stop and take a photo of Cerro Wood. It had these stairs going up to a white cross. Cerro Wood is also known as Monte di Cristo, and there is a reason for that. And it goes back almost 500 years. Everybody's heard of Ferdinand Magellan, famous for being the first man to sail around the world. In 1520, his little flotilla was scouting south, looking for a passage west around the South American continent. And he came to this inlet, which he thought was a passage west, but it wasn't. It was a dead end. It was the Bay of San Julian. Faced with rebellion and mutiny, he decided to spend the coming winter anchored here. Grateful for having found a safe harbour, he and his men climbed this hill and celebrated the first mass in Argentine territory. That's why it's called Monte de Cristo. And this hill offers a, a pretty good view of the whole Bay of San Julian. So many years later, 150 years later actually, a British sailor called John Wood climbed here and left his name here. And it was discovered 76 years later by a Spanish expedition. And that's how it got the name Cerro Wood or Mount Wood. It's worth mentioning when Magellan arrived, he had five ships and around about 270 men. But only one ship made it back, the Nau Victoria. Magellan was killed in the Philippines and only 18 or 19 survivors made it back to Spain. So you could imagine nearly all of those sailors would have been up there for that mass 500 years ago, but so few of them made it back to Spain. A lot of history up there. 
but it's windy and cold and I'm going to keep heading south to get down to the Strait of Magellan myself before winter snows me in. Heading into the town of Puerto San Julian, this is the first glimpse I've got of the Atlantic Ocean on this trip. You can see why Magellan and others anchored here. There was an escarpment that protected everything from those strong westerly winds. Magellan's feat of circumnavigating the world wasn't repeated until Sir Francis Drake came 58 years later. He also anchored here and actually found the gallows where Magellan had executed mutineers. Drake himself had to execute his best friend here due to a mutiny. Fast forward 256 years later, Charles Darwin anchored here on the Beagle and explored those cliffs and found strange fossil bones he thought were from a mastodon, but they were later identified as an extinct animal called Macrochania, and they are very unusual because the animal's nostrils were situated on its forehead between its eye sockets. Filling up with gas on the highway there, lots of trucks. Next stop was something called Mirador El Gran Bajo de San Julian, which I would translate as Lookout of the Great Depression of San Julian. There was a little side parking spot there, uh, but what's out there? What is it? <laughs> well, this sign says the lowest point is a lake called Carbon Lake. Carbon in Spanish means coal or charcoal, and it's 107 meters below sea level. And according to this, it's the lowest point in both the southern and western hemispheres. It says it's almost 3,000 square kilometers and you'll find lots of fossils and petrified wood. I got my DSLR out and zoomed in and uh, I think that's a natural gas pumping station. The road here was long and lonely. The next thing of interest was a signpost for a sheep ranch called La Gringa. And as if being this far from anywhere was bad enough, you had to go another 15 kilometers beyond that gate to get to the homestead, Estacion La Gringa. The next big town it was also on a river protected by an embankment. With the cyclonic winds you get nearly every day here, it's the only sensible place to build a, a settlement. They look like army barracks. The name of the town sounds military. Comandante Luis Piedra Buena. It's only got about 4,000 inhabitants. When I walked back to the bike after taking this shot, I almost tripped over the dehydrated remains of a dead dog. Roadkill, I guess. Pretty sad. His dog tag was still attached. When I went into town, there was a police checkpoint. The policeman I spoke to could have been called a police boy. He looked so young. He told me there was plenty of accommodation in the town, but I could easily make Rio Gallegos today, the next big town. I told him my bike was slow and that I like to stop and take photos. I didn't mention to him that my headlight was broken at the moment, and he didn't check, thankfully. But I know the golden rule is you do not ride at night on roads that you don't know. So it's always prudent to look for a place to stay well before sunset and plan your riding accordingly. So I was thinking, well... Maybe this is one of the times I have to call it quits early in the afternoon. But then he said there is a there is a hotel halfway between this town and Rio Gallegos, a uh, hundred and something kilometres, and I should be able to make that. So I filled up with this Fangio XXI brand petrol and continued south on Ruta Tres. He said, just keep looking to the left, I can't miss it. I was getting a bit worried because it was getting late, I had a long way to go, and what if the hotel was full? then I would have to keep going. And I had my eyes peeled to the left, not wanting to miss the hotel. Then it appeared. It was much more modern than I anticipated. And then I was worried it was closed because there was no other cars in the car park. Just then the sun came out from behind the clouds and a truck driver said, go in, go in. And uh, yes, it was open. A multitude of stickers indicated many a touring biker had stayed here in the past. It was a little more luxurious compared to last night's accommodation and it had a price to match, but hey, any port in a storm. And it was well worth it to have this beautiful dinner after a piping hot shower. The manager of the hotel, his surname was Jamison, and when he heard that I was Australian, he asked me two or three times, Austrian or Australian? I said Australian. And he said that his ancestors were Scottish sheep farmers who immigrated via South Australia. They didn't like South Australia, they couldn't make a, a living there, they said, so they got on a boat and came to Patagonia, probably back in the time of the Clippers, and um, settled here and made a go of it. They had this poster stuck up. It says, Cruzada Solidaria a Caballo de la Quiaca a las Malvinas. That's interesting because it's a solidarity horse ride from the very north of Argentina through nearly all the different provinces down to Patagonia and then they go on a boat to Las Malvinas which is the Falklands and it says Campaña Nacional por el Blanqueo de los Trabajadores Rurales 
Blanqueo, I found out, is Argentine for formalising workers, especially rural workers. A lot of them don't have health insurance, don't pay tax, don't get all the workers' rights that you would if you worked in the city. So this is to bring attention to the plight of rural workers. And further down it says they're in favour of donating organs, uh, stopping child labour, no to drugs, no to alcohol, a homage paid to someone, Atahualpa Yupanqui, he's a very famous singer. It says there's going to be a cultural exchange between the different municipalities and they're going to recite Martin Fierro in Las Escuelas. Martin Fierro is a very famous, like, folkloric gaucho cowboy story and they're going to recite it in schools. Very interesting, especially since they're going to the Falklands. It says at the bottom it's uh, to pay homage to the heroes of the war, meaning the Falklands War. So... Hmm. Well, it had been a pretty big day and I'd seen a lot, but for the second day in a row, I didn't click record on my GPS and I've only got one GPS that's still working. But I did write down the mileages from beginning to end and every time I pulled up for petrol, I wanted to work out how many kilometres I'd done and the gas mileage. And I was quite surprised when it worked out to be 501 kilometres. That's a lot. <laughs> but I did get up early and uh, I did end late. And the wind, it did sometimes stop me, but it was more towards the side. So it didn't really affect me that much. Obviously, the uh, the mileage was a bit less than the last time I calculated it. But overall, I think I'm only one day away from Punta Arenas and the southern tip of the South American continent. A place called Cabo Froward. Another thing that Senor Jamison told me was that it can snow and ice can stay on the road any time after the 1st of May. It's now the 17th of April, so I really have to get a move on if I want to see everything I want to see down in extreme Patagonia and come back. That's all for now, amigos. But coming up in the next episode, you'll see... Not the best place to camp here, another minefield. Oh man, I can't believe it. Not one, but two shipwrecks. Cocina means kitchen in Spanish. This place looks like it was abandoned just yesterday. Ah, oh, you would not believe the wind and only four degrees in the middle of the day. It's freezing.